How's it going everyone? It's Chow here and today we are going to talk a little bit about how to solve inbreeding problems, more specifically complete inbreeding problems, at least mathematically. So when you approach a lot of introductory biology classroom questions, some of them will ask you to do stuff like Hardy-Weinberg and those types of equations, but other ones ask you to solve uh, what happens if this population is going through complete inbreeding. And we're going to talk about that in this particular video. So let's get started. Now first, to just clarify stuff, the phenomenon um, in which individuals select mates based on their phenotypes or genetic lineage, that's just non-random mating, which I think makes a lot of sense if you think about it logically. And of course, this can alter the relative proportion of homozygotes and heterozygotes that is predicted by your Hardy-Weinberg equations. So you're gonna see a change in the homozygotes or the heterozygote, so you're gonna see changes in genotype frequency, but you will not change the allele frequency, and that's pretty important, so we'll come back to that in a second. So inbreeding is just mating between relatives. It increases the frequency of homozygotes and reduces the frequency of heterozygotes in each generation. So effectively, you increase the frequency of homozygotes at the expense of heterozygotes in one specific population that we're talking about. So how exactly do you do a problem that asks you, well, what happens if this population goes through complete inbreeding? So one of the first steps that you have to go through is actually just take one-fourth of the heterozygotes and add them to each of the homozygous populations. So essentially what happens is you'll be left with one-half of the original heterozygotes in the new population and one-fourth of the heterozygote frequency will go to one group of homozygotes, and the another one-fourth will go to uh, another group of the homozygotes. So one-fourth goes to big A, big A, if you're talking about homozygous dominant, and then one-fourth goes to the other homozygous, in this case homozygous recessive, which is little a, little a. So let's look at this example. I think it's easier to explain it with an example. We have this population over here, 30 big A, big A, 40 big A, little a, 30 little a, little a. After complete inbreeding, this should be complete inbreeding, after complete inbreeding, remember, you will be left with one half of the original heterozygotes in the new population. So we had 40, after complete inbreeding, we're left with 20, one half. We also take one fourth of the heterozygote frequency to go to one group of hom uh, homozygotes. So you can see that in this particular case, we have 40 individuals that are in the heterozygote population. If we're gonna take one fourth of 40, that's 10. So 10 individuals are gonna get added into the homozygous dominant group over here. And then the other one fourth of the heterozygote frequency will go to the other group of homozygotes. So one fourth again is uh, 10 in this case and 10 will go to this side over here. So just visualize what happens uh, in terms of these descriptions, and then go ahead and look at this example over here, and it should make a lot of sense. Now, let's look at this population over here. We have frequency of genotype big A, big A is 0.64. Frequency of genotype big A, little a, the heterozygote is 0.32. And then the frequency of little a, little a genotype is 0.04. So the first question is, if there's no inbreeding, is this population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? And you can pause the video here and try to do that yourself to see if you can get an idea. But if you actually go through the calculations over here, which you should be able to do now, since in order to know how to do inbreeding, I think you should get a hang of how to do Hardy-Weinberg questions. But these are just the calculations written out. And you can see that if you run the, the Cardi-Weinberg equations through, you get the exact same numbers. And so this is the expected genotype frequency. You compare it to the original genotype below over here, which are the same as these over here. They match. So this population is in Hardy-Weinberg if there's no inbreeding. So you're following the five rules of Hardy-Weinberg. Now, what happens if you have complete inbreeding? So you have 0 0.64, 0 0.32, and 0 0.04. Remember, you divide basically essentially after complete inbreeding the heterozygotes by two. So you multiply it by a half or divide it by two. And essentially you can end up being, uh, you end up with the result 0.16. So 0.32 divided by two is 0.16. Now one fourth of the heterozygote goes to big A, big A, and one fourth of the heterozygote goes to little a, little a, as we discussed. So we have uh, 0.32, which is our heterozygotes, 
one fourth of that is 0 0.08. So 0 0.08 is gonna go to this over here. 0 0.08 is then gonna also go to this over here. And so essentially you have 0 0.64 plus 0 0.08, which is 0 0.72, and then 0 0.04 plus 0 0.08, which is 0 0.12, and thus we end up with these individuals over here through uh, a situation with complete inbreeding. So what happens is that these are different than our expected values over here that we calculated using Hardy-Weinberg and just by checking back to the original population. So in this case, the observed and the expected values don't match, so the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. But there's a catch to it. And what's really fascinating is that you're going through inbreeding and also this accounts for non-random mating as well. You're changing the genotype frequencies. So you're seeing that the genotype frequencies are different between an inbred population versus a non-inbred population. But really, what's really fascinating is that it causes a shift in the genotype frequencies but it doesn't cause a change in the allele frequency. So if you use these uh, genotypes over here and you use the Hardy-Weinberg population, the Hardy-Weinberg equations, you can see that despite the fact that the genotypes are different, if you do the calculations, the allele frequencies are the same. So essentially, inbreeding and other forms of non-random mating causes change in the genotype frequencies, but not in the allele frequencies. So because there's no change in the allele frequencies, it does not cause evolution. That's something very important to keep in mind. Complete inbreeding, despite causing changes in the genotype frequencies and wrecking the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, does not cause evolution because it does not cause a change in the allele frequency. So evolution, in our case, is a change in the allele frequencies. If that doesn't happen, then there's no evolution. And inbreeding, complete inbreeding, does not cause evolution because the allele frequencies don't change. Very important point to keep in mind. So think about that for a second because that's a very key point that's probably going to come up on the exam. So try to take that in and understand it and know why that's the case. And finally, just a brief discussion here is inbreeding depression is just a decline in average fitness that takes place when the homozygosity increases and the heterozygosity uh, decreases in a population. So you sometimes can have situations where the heterozygote has a heterozygote advantage. Um, whereas the homozygous individuals might not be as advantageous. Of course, it depends on the population. But overall, because you're inbreeding, you're going to cause a decline in genetic diversity. You're going to cause a, a decline in sort of the uh, amount of heterozygotes in the population, which can potentially have a detrimental effect on survival, reproduction, fitness of the population as a whole. So what's going to be very important is just knowing how to do these calculations, knowing the difference between complete inbreeding as well as Hardy-Weinberg. So here's a challenge question for you to take a look. Um, and then uh, we'll go through the answers in a short while. So try and do this on your own. And uh, we'll come back and discuss the answers in a short bit. So pause the video here and try to figure it out. All right, so here we have the answers. I think it makes a lot of sense to all of you. It should, if you have that whole idea down in your mind about complete inbreeding and how to do the calculations. So again, one fourth of these individuals, uh, you could just divide it by two first, so these end up being uh, half of that, but we're really not talking about it. We're looking for um, what percentage of little a, little a individuals will be at the beginning of the next generation. So we really don't care too much about the heterozygous. We're looking at the homozygous recessive individuals in this population. So. Remember, one-fourth of the heterozygote population goes to each side, so one-fourth of 28 is 7, and since one-fourth of heterozygotes will be added to little a, little a, 26 individuals starting at the beginning plus the 7 individuals, you will get 33 out of 100 individuals, so 33 out of 100, that's 33%. Again, try to take that in and understand it. Keep in mind that when it comes to complete inbreeding, there's no evolution happening because there's a change in genotype frequencies, but not a change in the allele frequencies. Very important again. And once you get an understanding of that, I think the calculations are pretty straightforward. Once you keep track of what you're doing and know the differences between uh, calculations in complete inbreeding versus calculations in Hardy-Weinberg. So I hope that was helpful. 
Uh, best of luck studying, and I will see all of you in the next video. So take care, everyone.